Justin Gaethje fires back at Rafael Fiziev. Back in March of 2023, Gaethje and Fiziev engaged in a fierce three-round war during the UFC 286 Edwards vs. Usman 3 main card. Gaethje emerged victorious by majority decision, putting an end to Fiziev's six-fight win streak. Just recently, Fiziev did an interview with the All-Star and accused Gaethje of running for the first two rounds and stated that an eye poke changed the course of their fight. Declass him or knock him out, bro. Who give him a good fight, you know? He ran away from me two rounds. He ran away. He he started to win me only after I poke because my eye doesn't see anything. It's a big, big white, big white circle on my right eye all fight. Big white circle. I didn't see anything with my right eye. So he fight going good only after I poke and round three when I'm start to tire, you know. But yeah, but he ran away two round, you know, he's run, 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 he's eye like yeah, maybe his is his his game plan. My game plan is shit and uh, I do a lot of shit on this fight. Don't listen to my corner, don't don't follow the game plan, but still he ran away two round. Now, Gaethje fired back tweeting, not a good luck here. I hit him so hard he forgot which eye got poked. Your right eye got torched by my right hand, kid. Fiziev replied, the fact is that the fight dynamics shifted for me after the eye poke. It's my fault that I didn't take the time to recover. Unfortunately, eye pokes happen and we as fighters should be ready for such accidents, especially your opponents. No disrespect, man. I'm rooting for you. Johnny Walker has unveiled the results of his genetic test. In his latest Twitter video, Walker unveiled getting a 23andMe genetic test which analyzed his ancestry. As such, he claimed to be from different ethnic backgrounds like 22% African, 72% European, 3.8% Indigenous American, and 0.7% Western Asian. Furthermore, since he now knows he belongs to the African race, he casually dropped a racial slur in the video. What's up guys? I did my 23andMe genetic test and it come back. So. I'm gonna tell you guys what I am. My genetic is a little bit crazy because I have a little bit pro everywhere. So Brazilians is like this, you know, we come to conquer, have a little bit peace for everyone. Take a look. Man. So this is my version Nigerian, my friend. I'm 3.3% Nigerian. Proud to be Nigerian. I'm also Angola and Congolese, my friend. Joe Rogan gets honest on the UFC's antitrust lawsuit. For years now, fighters like Kung Lee and Nate Quarry have been bankrolling a lawsuit against the UFC. The suit accuses the promotion of purposely keeping down fighter pay through anti-competitive tactics. These tactics include buying out competition and controlling market prices for top fighters in the sport. If the UFC loses the trial, it could pay up to $1.6 billion in damages to over 1,200 fighters who competed between 2010 and 2017. UFC brass has been mostly silent about the lawsuit, with the exception of a recent comment from Dana White. Now, on his JRE podcast, Joe Rogan made a comment about the upcoming trial, saying, They're definitely the best at it, but here's the problem with the monopoly argument. You can make that argument with the NBA, you can make that argument with the NFL, you can make that with Major League Baseball. Well, they bought out the competition, which is definitely true. They bought out Affliction, they bought out Strike Force. No, it's not illegal. They do it in everything. In some businesses, they will break you up if you have a monopoly, and it seems to be connected politically. Like, how much money are you donating to the Democratic Party? How much money are you donating to the Republican Party? How much money do you spend on whatever programs they want, whatever this, whatever that, whatever foundations you have to play this game? Still, if people complain and a lawsuit comes about, there is this possibility that you could be a monopoly, but there's a lot of monopolies, man. Michael Bisping reacts to Jared Cannonier's call out of Hamza Shimaev. Shimaev has been advocating for the next middleweight title shot, but may find himself in a number one contender fight after receiving a call out from Jared Cannonier. Speaking on his BYM podcast, Bisping said that he likes the idea of a potential bout between the two and said if Hamza beats number 4th ranked Hananir, people will stop saying he doesn't deserve to fight for the middleweight gold. See, I absolutely love that. And shout out to Jared Cannonier because how many people are calling out Hamza? I know there's people in the past that have done that, but for Jared Cannonier to be in the position that he is, to mm -hmm. have a win over the former champion Strickland, a man that's at the top of the food chain, although he's not the champion or contending for it anytime soon. Top five has been for a long, long time. And one good win or two good wins is right there. To call out Hamzat Chimaev is a 
gangster move because Hamzat's calling everyone out. And also for Hamzat, right? Because everybody points to the same thing. Whenever Hamzat says he should get a title fight, when any anytime anybody says or suggests that, they turn around and say, well, who's he beating at middleweight? That is what everybody says. That is, and, and there's some validity to that argument, right? There is, there is. any way you slice it. Um, so for him beating Jared Cannonier, a perennial contender that's been there for a long time, who is top of the food chain, that shuts that box up. And for mm -hmm. Jared Cannonier, a win over Hamzat Chimeyev is a big, big thing. It's right. a big deal. Kevin Lee ends his MMA retirement. Lee announced his retirement in July of 2023 following a 55-second submission loss to Renat Fakhradinov. The appearance was his first fight back with the UFC since he was released in November of 2021. Now, six months later, Lee took to Twitter announcing that he will fight in MMA once again, most likely at lightweight. No timeline for the return has been given. It's unclear if he will remain on the UFC roster, his contract frozen, or if the promotion severed ties when he notified it of his retirement. Kevin tweeted, I'm coming out of retirement, I'll fight MMA again. I don't know when, where, or who yet, but I'm dropping weight and getting into shape now. Followed up with, I'm gonna get in the best shape of my life, that's my focus right now. It's been six months since I retired and I miss being around the sport. Here's how the MMA community reacted to Kevin's announcement. Yasko said, do a grappling match before, get your toes in the water, don't jump in. You're unretiring and you aren't even in shape yet, laughing my f***ing ass off, okay bro. Getting in shape doesn't matter if you don't have the motivation and same energy, that drive, that pep in your step, you'll never get it back again. You've become slower and a more conscious fighter, you used to be an athletic strong kid, your time on top is past. Need the Tony rematch, whoever loses retires. Just to get staff and lose again? All that to get sent into retirement again? You still got time bro, I believe in you. Bro you good at lightweight, you was beating Charles before you got finished, lightweight your true weight class. Sean Strickland beats up a Power Slap contestant. Strickland made an appearance on the most recent episode of the reality show, Power Slap Road to the Title. He asked a group of Power Slappers working out at the facility if anyone wanted to box. The former middleweight champion usually gets flagged for going too hard during sparring sessions, which is exactly what happened in the case of Colton Cole. The Power Slap League contender accepted Strickland's invitation to some spar boxing and got beat up so bad that he was removed from the competition after suffering broken ribs. So the guys ran into Sean Strickland at the gym and Colton took the opportunity to spar with Strickland in the boxing ring. Absolutely stupid. Horrible decision. He's hurt and now he has to be removed from the competition. Did they see some problems in your ribs? No, he just didn't want to, uh, you know, put on a shitty fight. Said, so I'm not feeling good right now. Probably best I, I don't compete if I, can, uh, if I can't perform at 100%. Time for today's top memes. Third place was found over on Instagram and was posted by as shopped as it gets. Second place meme was found over on Reddit and was posted by a user named PoleMMA. And the top picked meme was found over on Instagram and was posted by Beaver Smash TV. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to stay in the talk.